After running a fabric boutique and sewing studio for 21 years, we've seen a lot. Mm -hmm. Between the two of us, we have 80 plus years of sewing and design experience. Seriously, we look great for our ages. <laughs> In these years, we have seen a lot of incredible feats of creativity. We have also seen some aha moments when people learn something new and useful. And we've also seen our fair share of marketing techniques, tutorials, etc. that are just so wrong and backwards and misinformed that... <laughs> I always say, it's a good thing my hair is pulled back because it would be constantly standing on end. Steam comes out of our ears. <laughs> Anyway, so you could really say that these things really rip our seams. They do. We decided to share our frustrations with you in these short videos. We hope that you'll learn something new and share a laugh with us. Some of these topics are no laughing matter. Mm -hmm. We really hope you'll be encouraged to question the information that you're constantly bombarded with. Because not every tip is worth sharing. Not every technique will make things easier. And some things are just untrue. So let's see what really, really rips our seams. Today, I'm gonna talk to you about quilting cotton. And I'm gonna keep this brief and to the point. There is no such thing, people. And when someone comes into the store asking for quilting cotton, it really rips my seams. Or even worse, when someone comes in and they see all of our beautiful fabrics and they're like, Ugh, you only have quilting cotton. As if that is somehow not good enough for their project. Oof. Now listen, I can hear you all out there gasping and shaking your head in disbelief, but please, please hear me out. And then come and join me for my fiber to fabric class where I use all of my textile development background to teach you about how fabric is made. And in that class, we dive into the finer points of fabric development that I'm gonna totally gloss over right now. But quilting cotton is a marketing term. If I called up any one of the factories that I worked with in my garment industry past and was like, bring, bring, hey, can you make me some quilting cotton today? They would be like, what? We don't make that. It's not a thing. You see, when quilting started to become popular, all fabrics were merchandised together in the store. And some people who were just starting to quilt, shout out to my beginners out there, didn't know how to tell the difference between all the various weights of cotton. There are lots and they have all kinds of uses. But remember, cotton is just the fiber type. More on that in my class. There are so many different types of cottons and they all have different names. And those names kind of refer to the construction, the weight, is it heavy, is it light, is it tightly woven, if it, is it loosely woven? There's cotton canvas, cotton sateen, cotton lawn, cotton voile, cotton velour, cotton corduroy, cotton flannel, cotton gauze, cotton denim, cotton velvet, cotton jersey, which I have on today. What you wanna say when you're looking for fabric to use in a quilt is the same as when you're looking for fabric for a pillowcase or a dress, and that is cotton poplin. It's also what you wanna look for when you're shopping online. Although I will say most places use the marketing term quilting cotton to make it easier for consumers because that's what you guys are told to look for, right? What you should know about quilting cotton is that it's a very specific plain weave poplin that typically has a 60 by 60 thread count. That means there's 60 little yarns per inch, right? If you got in a little magnifying glass and you started to look at them and count them, you would see that. Sometimes in big box stores, you see something that in the industry is called cotton broadcloth. This stuff will be marketed to you as quilting cotton. It'll have that little banner over top of it that says, hey, here's your quilting cotton. But this cotton is a looser weave and it is prone to abrasion, pilling, and wrinkling, sometimes even color loss. You've gotta beware for cotton broadcloth because it is not as high quality as what you would find in an independent fabric boutique like Smile Spinners. While you're shopping, you may also see the term cotton shirting because this is the very same quality, ladies and gentlemen, 
and the same hand feel that we're used to seeing in button-up shirts and dresses. Yes, they make excellent quilts, but back in the 70s, someone decided that they needed the term quilting attached to them so that people making quilts could find them a little bit easier in the store. Personally, I think that this was a way for somebody somewhere to make a little bit more money on the new quilting fad that is still a hugely popular hobby today. Cotton is the fabric of our lives. If it's good for a quilt, then it's good for a dress, for a shirt, for pants, for a crop top, for a tote bag, for a pillow, you name it, honey. But don't you dare call it quilting cotton. You let your cotton poplin be anything your heart desires. And if you find that you have more questions, I would love, love, love to see your beautiful face in one of my classes, held in person and via Zoom. Visit smilespinners.com for more information and to register. See you soon. Happy sewing.